Hello everyone, today I'm going to walk you through the Black Shoals model. Um, this model is uh, something that I built while I was at the business school. Uh, I was taking the derivatives class and I wanted to be able to quickly calculate the value of the call options and put options uh, based on some of the variables that we input. Um, uh, by the way, just disclaimer, uh, please consult your financial advisor if option investing is right for you. So this uh, video has nothing to do about uh, making an investment decision on, on, on options because they're extremely risky investment tools. So this is just for a, a model for you, for your own use, to be able to calculate the prices based on different variables. Um, so uh, let, let me walk you through the model, what we have, uh, different portions of the model, what we have here. So we have the yellow area here where we input the different variables. We have the green area here where we make the calculations and we have the white area here where, where we uh, finally uh, calculate the value of the call and put options. So the yellow area, the stock price, is basically the current price of the stock. Uh, this changes any second so whenever you use this model you will have to update it by hand. Exercise price is the strike price of the option. It means the uh, if it's a call option, it's the so in this case, for example, uh, you will have the right to buy the stock at 15, and if it's a put option, then you will have the right to sell the uh, stock at 15. RF means the risk-free interest rate, the annual risk-free interest rate, which is 3% in this case. It just based on your market, it might change, so you might be in a higher interest rate market, it it's just depends, let's take 3% for now. Time to maturity is, uh, well, as a percent of the year. So in this case, we calculate 130 days divided by 365 days. This is for my example, I used 130 days. Uh, but this figure here, the 0.36, which is 36%, it is the portion of the year. Uh, so you put this T value in terms of uh, as a as a portion of the year so if we had one year this figure would be one so 365 divided by 365 it would be one okay and the volatility is the price uh, change price oscillations uh, of the stock of the underlying asset for the uh, uh, for the recent past uh, this figure is something you can take directly from the from the interwebs or you can just uh, calculate on your own. I won't go into the details of how to calculate volatility, but there is just formulas uh, for that as well. Uh, if it's hard for you, you can just ask, uh, search uh, search on Google for a, for a certain asset, just volatility for X, uh, for example, and then it will give you the results. So you can just type that number in. In my case, I just took 30% as the volatility. So after this, what we do is uh, we go through uh, a lot of different calculations as part of the Black-Scholes formula. And I'm not going to go into any of the details of this, except I will just show you the calculation of the formula, because this is all very complex and I don't want to uh, kind of make this very complex for you. I will just I just want uh, this, the aim of this video is just for you to be able to build this model and then just start using it right away instead of going into what is a uh, natural logarithm function or what is exponential function etc. So that's a subject of different uh, different uh, videos. So in this case uh, let's, walk, let's walk through the model one by one. So the seventh row here the variance uh, so we just basically uh, take the, take the uh, square of uh, 6, row 6, which is volatility, so volatility times volatility, b6 times b6, uh, gives you the variance. And you can just follow the formulas from uh, the formula bar, by the way. So row 8, we're taking natural logarithm function, natural logarithm function of s divided by e, stock price divided by exercise price. So it's basically the formula is ln, in parentheses, b2 divided by b3. The ninth row, we take r plus uh, half of the variance and then multiply the whole thing by t, time to maturity. So in this case, the formula would be b4 plus 0.5 times b7 
and then we multiply the whole thing by b5 which is time to maturity row 10 uh, we take standard deviation times square root of t uh, which means standard deviation is basically volatility so it's b6 times square root b5 sqrt is the function here on excel so b6 times sqrt of b5 then we calculate d1 uh, which is uh, b8 plus b9 divided by b10 so we just made some calculations above and then we just kind of gather them together and we end up with a figure here then we take the normal distribution uh, of b11 uh, so of the d1 we just calculated above how we do this is the norms dist function on excel so we take norms dist of b11 and then we calculate d2 which is b11 minus b10 and then we take the norms dist function of b13 which is d2 we just calculated uh, right before this so we take norms dist function of b13 and finally uh, we do uh, divide b3 by exponential uh, function of b4 times b5 so the final formula for the collapsion value would be b2 times b12 minus b15 times b14 and the value of the put option would be b16 minus b2 plus b15 so this was just for you to write down the formula and build your own model uh, so you can stop here if you just want to go make your own model and just uh, start uh, working on your option pricing but if you want to understand a little bit about the logic and the sensitivity of this model to different variables just stay on uh, for another couple minutes I will just walk you through how this model changes, how the prices of the call option and put options change uh, based on different variables, uh, based on the change in different variables. So let's see, first start at the stock price. Uh, let's see if the stock price goes up from 13 to 14. This means the call option value should go up and the put option value should go down. Why? Because we are becoming more likely to be able to exercise call option. So if it goes up to 14, uh, let's say even 16, then even it, the option will even become in the money. So it will become very valuable. So let's make it 14. So please note the call option value here. So it's 33 cents right now. So if we make this 14, it goes up to 66 cents. If we make this 16, it goes up to $1.78. So it goes up in value. Why? Because the option is now in the money, which means if the contract matures today, we will still make a buck here so we will be able to buy this stock which is priced at $16 at we will buy it at $15 so we will make a one buck profit uh, if it were to expire today but the call option is more valuable than one dollar why because we still have time to maturity so there are chances that the stock might go even higher let's say to 17 which can give us two dollar profit in that case and the option value even goes up further uh, and the put option goes down in value uh, you might have noted that why because the stock price was 13 initially and the option was in the money for the put option because if today was uh, if the option was to mature today then we would have made two dollar profit here by being able to sell the stock at fifteen dollars so if the price goes down to ten dollars then the option of value of the put option will go up significantly to 485 from 217 so this is how the option value is sensitive towards the stock price the current stock price let's go back to the initial number exercise price is the similar you know if you take it up then you know the, let's make this 18 then the value of the call option will go down and the put option will go up it's just kind of similar to stock price value RF is something that we use for factoring in the time value of money because well we basically basically make some investment in the stock uh, premium a stock option premium and uh, there is some time value attached to it so this just uh, works to factor that into the model so you can make this 
10% and as you not noticed value of the call option went up uh, there you go from 33 cents to uh, 40 44 cent, 41 cents and as you noted uh, that put option value of the put option went down why because you basically had a chance to uh, put that money you're already at a profit the stock uh, the the uh, the option is already in the money so if RF is 10% you might as well just put it in the bank so that's why the value of the put option goes down um, let's take it back to the normal level time to maturity the longer the time towards to, towards the maturity the more valuable the option value this is the case for both put and call option because well if a stock is volatile if a stock is never stagnant and you know none of the stocks are stagnant by the way um, if the if there is some kind of a volatility chances are the longer the time the longer the higher the chance of you hitting the strike price so let's say this goes up to 230 days instead of 130 days then both of the option values will go up so the call option went up from 33 cents to 60, 63 cents and the put option went up from 217 to 235 and let's take it back down to 30 days both the values will go down and for the call option is significantly down because why because well within that 30 days it's very unlikely for the stock price to hit the strike price for this option to be able to be in the money so it's basically virtually zero it's almost uh, worthless let's take it back to 130 days and finally the volatility uh, the higher the volatility the higher the value of the call and put option uh, and this is why because the, the more was the, the, the stock the more the stock oscillates, uh, the more chances you have uh, to uh, use, utilize these options, the more chances you have for this stock price to go above and beyond the exercise price so that you can make some profit. So that's why uh, the volatility is uh, very important in determining the option price. So let's make this 60% volatility, then both of the options will go up in value. And if the option has, if the stock has almost zero volatility, which is 1%, then the val value of the call option is basically zero. And value of the put option, well, there is some value, but it's very low. And this is just for the sake of this stock, uh, this uh, option being in the money. Uh, if this uh, option was not in the money, then this put option value would be zero as well. Let's take it back to initial number so that's about it uh, these are I, I I wanted to walk you through some of the sensitivity uh, of different va variables uh, with regards to the pricing of the options if you have any questions just uh, put a comment uh, under the video and thank you for listening